today we're just diving into my mind again. Um, I know I'm a little late in posting. Life just kind of gets in the way sometimes. So stop it. We have a kitty coming over. There's always a kitty. Might have to kick them out. Anyway, um, welcome. Welcome to the podcast, friends. Last time, if you were here, I kind of left the end of it, the tail end of it, saying that I was going to talk about part of why I left the church, um, which is a really sensitive topic. And yes, I am going to talk about it today. But um, when I talk about the church, I talk about the LDS church, the Latter-day Saint church with the Mormons and all that. Um, but it is a, it's very sensitive. And a lot of what I'm saying in this podcast is stuff that I haven't really talked to a lot of people about. Like maybe my therapist and a couple members of my family, um, some of you that know me, like really know my story and have really stuck by me through all of it. And I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Um, so just, just know for today and for my whole life, really, because um, my friends that are practicing Mormon or practicing LDS They know I mean no harm by what I say. And really, for everyone, um, this is just me sharing my experience. And not everyone had the same experience I did. In fact, it bring the going to church brings them a lot of comfort. And I'm so glad that that is a thing that they have, but that is just something that is definitely not gonna work. Um, religious abuse is real. And there's a lot of sensitive things being talked about today. So when you're listening, please just keep that in mind. Um, Some of it may be hard to hear. Some of it you might not agree with. But um, I really feel like it just needs to be talked about. Um, So I was raised LDS my whole life. Like my grandparents were LDS, Latter-day Saint. And my whole family is. I'm the youngest of seven kids. And I think it gave me a lot of really good core values, Um, helped me, I don't know, helped me learn a lot of really good skills and kind of some things that are really important, but at the same time, it really hit the mark. Like I didn't realize that I had faced religious abuse until very recently, like within the last couple of years. Um, Guys, hold on. If you're in video, this is David. David's one of my foster kitties. Ooh. (laughs) She's actually a girl, but she's black and white, so I call her David. I'm sorry. Do you not like the attention? I'm going to put you down. Oh. (laughs) What is this face? (laughs) Cool. Okay. Um, I loved the way that I grew up. I spent a lot of time outside and really connecting with nature. But then like when it came to going to church, it was kind of hard. And I tried to put my, all of my faith into it. And like, there were just things about it that didn't really rub me the right way. I don't know if that's the right phrase. I just always had a lot of questions And like the stories in the Bible and the Book of Mormon didn't really make sense to me. And, you know, why can we drink Coke, but we can't drink coffee? Um, Things with the word of wisdom. I just, one thing after another, I had all these questions. And I was pretty much told to just not have the questions and have blind faith and to trust in the Lord and everything was going to be okay. But I couldn't just blindly trust because my trust had been violated so much. So of course I'm going to ask questions. Of course I'm going to, if I don't understand, I want to know why. Maybe this is why I became a teacher. Um, But, you know, when I was a kid, I also grew up in Oregon um, up until I was like 11, almost 12. So moving to Utah was a totally different experience. It was a huge culture shock because I went from being the only Mormon kid in my school to being like one of 25 my age just in my ward, which is like my 
people that I go to church with, if you're not familiar. Um, but yeah, it was, I wasn't the weird, I'm redhead. I'm not, I wasn't the weird redheaded Mormon girl anymore. I was like, just like everybody else. Um, but this is where we start to like understand where things kind of fall apart. Right. Um, I started to not really go to church when I was a teenager. I was like 15 and my mom kept saying I was never going to find happiness outside of the church and I needed to come back to the straight and narrow and I wasn't going to be able to be in heaven with her and I wasn't going to be able to live this full enriching life. Like I'm never going to know what happiness is if I'm not going to church and if I'm not following the teachings and things like that. And it was like a constant, it was a constant fight. Like even into my adulthood, um, I'm very thankful that towards the end of her life that she was able to accept me for who I am and understand why I, it's okay for me to not go to church and it's not going to be the end of the world. Right. Um, anyway, my mom would say a lot of stuff like that and just like, I'm never going to be happy. What am I doing? What about the plan of salvation? What about going to heaven? But like, what about my life now, right? What about the life that I'm already living? Why am I getting ready for some magical life up in the clouds where I get to have my own planet? I don't want one. Anyway, um, so eventually I started dating and my mom thought this was why I stopped going to church, but really it was because like, it doesn't make sense to me and I have to find my own way and you have to let me find my own way. Um, she would say things like I'm con condemning her to hell with my actions and things like that. Um, eventually I'm in high school, right? And my friend and I liked the same guy. Um, and I like had a private moment with him and I wanted to tell him, to date my friend because I had another guy that I was interested in. So this is where we start. This is where we start getting to the story. I'm a virgin at this point, right? Um, never had sex before. I tell this guy that I really think he should give my friend a shot because she really likes him a lot. And there's somebody else that likes me and, you know, maybe I'll date them. And if things don't work out, we can come back around and try. But like my friend really likes you and I think you should try to date her well the whole thing was <laughs> black kitty <laughs> johnny stop it um the whole thing was blown out of proportion um text messages were sent and my friend came to the house screaming and yelling at me that i betrayed her because she thought i was in there doing stuff with this guy and then rumors spread and Next thing I knew, like I was some big, huge slut and I had done all these things that I had never done before. So then I'm dating this new guy who was in my ward. We had the same bishop and everything. Um, he just lived right down my street. Eventually he um, cheated on me a lot. And he was making this big deal, deal about Valentine's Day. He actually broke up with me the day before Valentine's Day. And that's when he told me that he was cheating on me because he had been telling me all about this wonderful date he was planning. Um, and then he told me that the date was, someone, was with someone else and it wasn't with me. And I'm gross. And I should take a look at myself in the mirror because I'm not leading a virtuous life and all this stuff. This is the first guy that I had ever slept with. I gave him like my everything and I cared about him a lot. Um, I came to found out, find out years later, he didn't even date me because he liked me. He dated me to make me an unavailable for his friend who actually did like me. So like the whole relationship was fake and there was a lot of pressure to have, um, there was a lot of pressure to have sex. We were sexually active. There was actually one day when um, our moms, this was actually mortifying. Our moms pulled us both out of school and took us to go eat. And his mom 
threw a box of condoms on the table and was like, what's this? 